and in 2050, 20 percent of our population is going to be elderly. So it all leads to more heart failure in our community. And if you look at the etiology, one thing I want to point out here is that multiple etiology in the Western countries as well as in India. This is due to drugs because cancer is more and more nowadays diagnosed and also they all receive very, very toxic drugs which are damaging to the heart. And in the West, we started a specialty called cardiac oncology, which is going to come in India as well because we are all giving toxic drugs which are damaging, damaging to the heart. And in places like Kerala, we have to think about endomyocardial fibrosis as well, apart from various other things. If you look at the etiology in India, which is different from the West, rheumatic heart disease is more than 50% of the heart failure. Next is skin heart disease. That's a very small percentage in heart failure in India. And compared to the West, and in India, younger people do have heart failure, but in the West, only elderly people. And in more male in India compared to female in the West, diabetes is more prevalent. Prognosis is worse compared to the West, which is 4% in the West during hospital admission, which is around more than 12%, three times more than more in India. And the new classification of heart failure is heart failure with a reduced ejection factor, which is around 50 percent, LV ejection factor is around 40 percent. Next condition is called heart failure with mid-range ejection factor, which is around 14 percent. The LV effect is around 40 to 49 percent. They all do have symptoms and signs and also elevated level of PNP, at least one additional criteria which are uh, structural heart disease and diastolic dysfunction. And number three is uh, heart failure with a preserved ejection factor, which is around 36%, and EF is normal in this group of people. And important thing here to see is that both heart failure with a reduced ejection factor as well as the people with a normal EF, they do have similar mortality. So both conditions have to be treated appropriately with the disease modifying drugs. And management or even from the European Society of Cardiology, but don't worry about it, it's very complex. But what I suggest is that anybody commit to a clinic or in the primary care with a heart failure, signs and symptoms, give loading dose of IV, no diuretic, say, bruise my party or age later, put them on oxygen, transfer the center with the cardiac failure heart facilities, and they all could be treated. And chronic heart failure, I'm just going to talk about all these drugs and the other part of management here. And if you look at the causes of death in heart failure, chronic heart failure, majority die due to sudden death, both New York Heart Association 1 and 3. But if you go to the stage 4 heart failure, they all die because of terminal illness. It's called end stage heart failure. And we do not have any drugs to treat heart failure until 1990. I remember when I was studying medicine, we have only uh, endoflomitocyte, digoxin, and propanol, or nothing else to treat heart failure people. But since 1990, more drugs are available now. All are disease modifying. First drug is the drugs came in the following survey study using uh, enlopril, which reduces 16 percent all causes of mortality. It came in 1991. Then, then came bisoprolol, even though metoprolol was used widely in Scandinavian countries. With the first study, clearly the more study used in bisoprolol, reducing 34% decrease all cause of mortality. And then came this angiotin receptor antagonist, which are mainly candisartum, kidvisartum, valsartum. They all reduce our cardiovascular mortality. And then, this is a, a shift study <coughs> came in 2010 using ivoprotein, which again produced a cardiovascular mortality by 18%. And this drug is mainly used in those people along with beta blocker, where the heart rate is more than 70 in sinusism. If the atrial fibrillation, then this ivoprotein is not clearly indicated. And also those people who cannot take beta blocker, then consider giving ivoprotein. Having a heart rate 
bring it down to less than 70. That, that FCC study came in using uh, a play road and mainly used heart failure as well as following myocardial infarction. Again, this is the renal cortical receptor antibodies, reduce the cardiovascular mortality by 37 percent. Uh, this is the latest drug uh, in a paradigm heart failure study, which I am one of the principal investigators in England. And that again, instead of using AS or ARB, it uh, reduces additional 20 percent reduce reduction in cardiovascular mortality. And those people who cannot take this AS inhibitors or ARB, then they are all afterload reduced agent. And this is study came in 1996 using and isosorbide diabetic in combination versus Mexico, which again clearly showed this reduction of 34 percent. So if AS or ARB is contraindicated, we can use this drug combination, but uh, in India, it's a lot of dilated available and also monoranging. This is one of the best drugs, which is again class 2A indication by the European Society of Cardiology. And Ejoxin, which is a wonderful drug, and I used to work in Birmingham, this drug William Bethany used to live in a place called Wooster, which is not far away from uh, Birmingham. And, but this Ejoxin has got OEO effect. Some research says it is beneficial, some say it's not beneficial. So you can look at that in you know, a paper every day where the digoxin role is going to be. With the current evidence, improved ventricular function, patient well-being, reduced hospitalization, and for most of the heart failure patient. But no effect in, on the survival in people with reduced ejective action. So we are not using it routinely for people with the heart failure. Very rarely we use it. And, and this is the class 2B with you know, indication in the European Society of Cardiology guidelines. May be considered in symptomatic patient in cytosism, despite treatment of AS, ARB, beta blocker, etc., and which reduce uh, hospitalization. Otherwise, we routinely in the best. Again, if you use digoxin, you have to carefully monitor the digoxin level because. If the digoxin level is higher than 1.2 nanogram per ml, the incidence of high mortality is goes up. So just be monitored very carefully, and if it is more than 1.2, you have to reduce the digoxin dose. And this is the commonly recommended drugs in the, in, by the European Society of Cardiology. All these drugs are evidence-based medication, and we use ramipril or lysinopril, enolopril, and all this beta blocker from bisoprolol to lepivilol, they can use it. Unfortunately, losartan now is stopped because it has got a pulsivitinic effect. So FDA has banned it in the West. Also, valsartan, current valsartan, as well do have some chemicals component in that, which again has got a pulsivitinic effect. And again, we can use epilogon and electron. This is army, which is a new drug for scubitrol valsartan and ibuprofen, which is used in those people along with the beta blood or on its own to reduce a heart rate less than 70. And this is uh, about this scubitra uh, world certain trial, came in 2014. And this is comparison versus enlocking standard dose uh, uh, versus this scubitra uh, world certain. In heart failure, it reduced ejection pattern and compared with the recommended dose of enlocking, it really more effective than enlocking in reducing the risk of cardiovascular death and hospitalization. And it is incremental benefit. If you give it in addition to beta blocker, it has got more benefit like risk reduction by 20%, reduction of heart failure, hospitalization by 21%, all cause of mortality by 16%. If you use Individual drugs like ACE inhibitors, this is around 18 percent reduction in the mortality, angiotensin receptor 10 percent, beta blocker around 35 to 36 percent, and renal corticoid receptor antagonist like epilogue and spinal like one around 25 percent. However, instead of ACE inhibitors or ARB, if we put him on this army, which is scubitor well sorted, we get around 28 percent. 38% benefit of reduction in the 
Martin. <coughs> well, we use that no cost price nowadays in hot pages. Um, even NICE, NICE is an uh, organization in UK. It's a National Institute of Clinical Excellence. Any product, any drug, any device comes in, it all has to be assessed by this committee. And if it is you know, cost effective, beneficial to the patient, then only they license the you know, that device or the medication to be used in England. And they assess this drug and they do recommend as a classroom indication to be used. And in the beginning, they used to use it only those people with a stable heart failure, class 2 or 3. Nowadays, they do recommend this could be used even following acute heart failure, won't stabilize it. It could be switched over to uh, audio. And these are the drugs available in India, which is entry stores, a drug used in UK, which is used in, in available in India. The other drugs like Asmarda, Sidmus, and Lymida is available in India which is uh, usually prescribed by the cardiologist. Uh, from systolic heart failure, we move on to the diastolic heart failure, which is a heart failure with a preserved ejection infection or heart failure with a mid-range heart failure. The prevalence is around 54 percent. Incidence falls from 1.1 to 5.5 percent, the general population. And prevalence of heart, preserved heart failure has increased in the last two Two decades because more and more elderly are living longer. Predominantly affect the patients above the age of 65, mainly women with a hypertension. Four existing cardiovascular risk factors are obesity, coronary disease, diabetes, atrial fibrillation, and hyperlipidemia. And there are multiple trials about the treatment of heart failure with the preserved HIV infection, which is diastolic heart failure and also meta-analyzing However, several randomized control trials have been conducted in search of useful therapy for diastolic heart failure without any success. And therefore, unfortunately, mortality in patients with heart failure with a research year remain unchanged for the past 20 years. Still, we don't know how to treat diastolic heart failure. And NICE 2018 recommends a beta blocker, diuretic, and chronic mineral oil corticoid receptor antagonist. And so all the, the you know, trials and they should be should not be concluded as a failure, but that the, you have to access the patient appropriately, evaluate why this patient is got diastolic heart failure, and then address the heart failure appropriately. Then, like if they got you know, hypertension, treat the hypertension. If they got diabetes, treat the diabetes. And also investigate, main investigations are echocardiogram and also the CMR, you know, cardiac uh, MRI. And those people with a class 2, 3, they compute a heart failure symptoms in spite of adequate disease modifying drugs. One should consider a device which is called CRT, Cardiac Lead Synchronization Therapy. In, in which case, you put three leads rather than two leads in the heart. The one lead going into the right atrium, other one goes to the right ventricle, but the third lead goes through the coronary sinus into the lateral aspect of the left ventricle. So it's a clear indication of the with the left ventricle block pattern with Q for its duration of more than four small squares or 150 milliseconds. And sometimes we do use it in people with a, you know, we are of 130 to 149, even people with a atrial fibrillation, normal QR of duration, but it is an expensive therapy. Before we offer to the patient, we had to discuss and uh, consider pros and cons before offering therapy. Because there's a lot of consequences subsequently because this patient became ill psychic if you know they don't get any benefit. And sometimes they use a device called ICD, implanted with cardiovascular defibrillator. In people who got a recurrent cardiac arrhythmia, such as ventricular pressure or you know, ventricular fibrillation and uh, also ventricular tachycardia, which is an added device. So this device also has got a facilities to pace as well defibrillate your heart as well. And we can't address the comorbidities like iron deficiency. It's one of the common 
finding in people with heart failure. They all respond to iron injections. So if the threat is less than 100 micrograms per liter, I suggest you giving uh, iron supplements. Also in diabetes, so they clearly recommend the guidelines has changed recently. And one shouldn't use uh, drugs like you know, glitter zones should be avoided. They all recommend people to have this, you know, uh, sodium uh, glucose transporters and uh, inhibitors or something like that, you know. Yeah, they're not like this one and things like that. So now I recommend the first line drug in people with a heart failure. And uh, one particular assist device. This is a technology which I gave, very, very expensive, which is used in India as well, in people who, got, who can afford, which is that device, initially they used to use bioventricular assist device where one device connected with the right ventricle into the pulmonary artery, other one to the left ventricle into the iota. Now we don't use it, we use only <coughs> left ventricular assist device where uh, LD affects to the iota, connect, connected to the external battery, and this is a commonly used device in the West. And clear indications are offered to those people who don't have a donor heart available at the moment. So it is given to those people who are awaiting transplant, so bridging the availability of the donor uh, heart. And also, it's a bridging therapy for old people that they are not eligible to have a, a transplantation because. In the West, we stop offering transplant at the age of 65. Sometimes, rarely, we go up to 70 in, in very, very influential people, probably. And otherwise, it's uh, used only temporarily. Sorry, sorry, I'm talking about the wrong thing here. This is a destination therapy for the elderly people I'm talking about. This brick therapy is young people with a heart failure. It is severe myocarditis where nothing is working. And we give antibiotics, all the disease modifying drugs, still very, very sick. I give this patient in 1991, very rich family, they got a lot of money, only son for three families, and patient died only 21. And this is a device is available now for bridge therapy. You put this in a device on the patients and allow the ventricle to recover. And a lot of occasions, even people who get the device awaiting transplant, with this uh, uh, by, you know, ventricular axis device, they get better as well. Then we return to normal. Very important to note the complications. If, if they are anticoagulated, this right arm, mm -hmm. the device get thrombosed, and also due to anticoagulation, uh, bleeding, it could be anywhere. Also, the device get infected, the device get failed as well. Also, simply use one in a particular axis device, people do have right arm, right heart failure. The heart transplantation, tremendous improvement since 1968. And lack of donors is a major problem. The complications of ejection and premature coronary atherosclerosis. With the immunosuppressive therapy, these people die of malignancy. Very, very important that this all should be explained to the patients because they all also have to take medication lifelong. It's not that you give the medication and have heart transplant, that's a cure and that's it. Patients shouldn't think that that's the end of it. They should be knowing that it is only temporary measure. They get rejected at any time and, and they have to comply with medication, with have good family support, etc. And it's a average survival in the West is around nine years. And in the US about you know ten years you know survival is fifty seven percent and also in UK five years survival survival is seventy percent. <coughs> Similar. And also, compared to 1990, as I said, a lot of advances in the treatment of heart failure. Like, you know, in, in UK, there's a guidelines all the heart failure patients should be admitted only under the cardiologist, under the cardiac portfolio. The general physicians cannot treat these heart failure patients. And also, we all investigate aggressively about etiology and apply appropriate treatment. Now that we got a heart key for heart failure, it involves nurses. And we all, you know, even give the IV therapy in the community, telemedicine, cardiac rehabilitation, as I said, new therapies like RNA and devices, and also EPs for arrhythmias has really make the patient live longer. 
and also the lesson of transplantation. In UK, the majority of the heart failure patients are elderly, so very, very small percentage only has cut in, in heart failure. And this statistics are all gentlemen put on the appropriate medication, beta blocker A, spanolactone diuretic, late transcendental warning, the patient is getting regular follow up, diagnosed with idiopathic dilated cardiomyopathy. We did a family screening. We couldn't find any uh, relatives suffering the uh, uh, cardiomyopathy. Probably they skipped the generations. And evidence-based therapy consists of really giving diuretics, beta blockers, KS, ARB, or ARNI, and very rarely digoxin, resistant the diuretic, we use metrazole, and people with the uh, uh, arthemias to give anticoagulation. And very important about vaccination because all these people, like any of the chest condition, should receive vaccination for pneumonia as well as influenza. And you can see that in you know, giving this RNA beta blocker MRA, 63% reduction in heart pain you know, in overall mortality. And, and very important. And you see somebody's heart failure, investigate regarding etiology and treat it accordingly like coronary heart disease or valvular heart disease, arrhythmias, etc. And advise the patient with monitoring daily day, restriction of the fluid and salt, telemedicine, monitoring you know, hemoglobin, electrolytes, and also BNP level, vaccination, MDT, etc. And self management care involving compliance with medication, avoiding salt. Avoiding fluids, including alcohol, stop smoking, exercise, monitoring weight, and evidence-based medicine. And that's what we all, although heart failure is the major cause of morbidity and mortality worldwide, still unknown how closely practitioners follow guidance directed medical therapy for heart failure. This came in the ninth set last year. Thank you very much. Questions, please. Losartan is the uh, and Losartan. 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 So all yes, uh, yes, is, uh, you can see that you know clearly 18 percent compared to 10 percent. Yes, only problem I noted is people do develop cough. Very very rarely ARP also produce cough. But yes, is excellent drug. That's a first line drug we use. We use commonly ramipril. Also, the Americans use a lot of isinopril. Uh, we don't use capital anymore. And also, enlop and enlop will be used a lot. And any questions? Any doubt? Thank you very much. Thank you for giving me an opportunity for one of my enemies. Thank you. I invite the president to hand over the certificate.